I sent I shared out the event, so hopefully. Okay, and people... we're live, and David says he shared the event. So today we have a couple of people in this hangout. Uh, first of all, my apologies for a significant delay here in starting it. We're about what, five minutes late, I guess. Uh, and that's due to my stupid Windows PC that took. I started at 9:35, which means it was like 30 minutes ago, and it's still not fully booted. I still look at my hard drive light there below. And it's going full speed. So uh, the moral of the story here is: do not use Windows computers to do anything meaningful. Use uh, Chromebooks, which boot up in about 10 seconds, and you're up and running. But uh, for those of us who still use Windows, that have to deal with delays and major waste of time. And that takes us to the topic at hand today, which is uh, doing online learning. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to also mention is that we're going to have to break hard at, in about 35 minutes because I got to go to regular school, pick up my daughter because she has a short day today. It's her last day of school. And that's mm -hmm. kind of the discussion. I mean, I, I realize I'm telling you guys about my life and most of you couldn't care less about it. But the reason I bring it up, there's actual reason behind it. And the reason is that um, doing education online i think is a in my personal opinion is definitely a way of the future that's available today uh in some of the prior hangouts i did and some of my posts and stuff you may have seen that i'm not a big fan of uh, our current public schools and school districts and it's nothing to do with school districts or, or schools themselves it has to do with the policies that they adopt and how they teach kids and and in many cases, parents are unhappy about the curriculum being picked. In many cases, people are unhappy with <clears throat> some of the political uh, elements that are inserted with, with academic education that really has nothing to do with anything. It's nothing more than induct indoctrination, as far as I'm concerned. No different than when I was growing up in the old Soviet Union, where uh, you know schools were heavily uh, just completely enthralled with propaganda about you know the whole soviet revolution and soviet approach and everything else and everybody knows how well that worked out so basically the online schooling capability brings in a lot of capabilities not shouldn't say capabilities a lot of options for parents especially parents for example who choose to homeschool their kids but also some other parents um, of kids uh, that have potentially some health issues. Like one of the things, for example, in my family, uh, myself, uh, Ben, who is in the hangout here, sometimes has some health issues where he is able to participate in a class, but he cannot actually come to school physically. But he could certainly do the class. It's not where he is unable to function at all. He just cannot, for, the, for a certain period of time, he cannot walk uh, due to health issues. And when that happens, he has to be at home. So that's why I started the you know, hangoutschool.com with the ability to have kids learn from um, qualified and experienced teachers, teachers who know what they're doing, uh, eliminating any of the political minutia, any of the uh, baloney that parents don't like in public schools, enabling children who have some health issues potentially to still participate, enabling children to participate from their own homes, from, from people participating in classes, not necessarily children, it could be adults too, from their offices, from, from Starbucks, anywhere where it's convenient. And you really need nothing more than a 200, somewhere around $200 uh, Chromebook from Google made by a bunch of manufacturers. Uh, uh, in addition to that, you need a decent connection, which you can easily get at any Starbucks right now. And you just put on a headset and you know, you're able to go to school. So that's kind of my reasoning, main kind of re reasons why I wanted to get the hangoutschool.com going. And if you go to www.hangoutschool.com, you can get some more information and sign up for some of the initial classes we have. Uh, but today I want to discuss this in more details. What, what I have uh, Mr. David E. Garcia here. Hello, David. Hi. And David, uh, I'll shut up in a second here. David will introduce himself in terms of his background but he is a professional educator, a teacher, and I wanted to get his take on this concept and this idea. And I know David has done um, some things 
in uh, digital education as well. That's why I didn't want to get somebody to, to, you know, bring their opinions about regular approach, uh, people who are opposed to digital education, because they just don't get it as far as I'm concerned. So I wanted to get somebody who is coming from the education um, environment, which David is in traditional education, he's teacher in, in regular schools, but at the same time, somebody who understands the concept of online education and who could intelligently talk about that and bring his both, you know, cons and pros on that subject. And also I have my son, Ben, over there. Hello, Ben. Hello. And Ben basically represents uh, one of the students who has participated in my um, online class last summer. I was teaching a class on the basic programming for uh, for kids, so he was in there. So he is, has a little bit of experience with doing some online learning. Plus, he's also um, done some learning using Khan Academy online, and also he is going to be doing some more classes this summer. But so the bottom line is he is pretty familiar with whole online uh, approach and using Hangouts, things like that, for all kinds of purposes, including education. <coughs> so I want to take his opinion too. So first, David, could you please tell us a little bit about yourself? And then maybe talk about this topic as much as you'd like. Okay, well, welcome everybody, whoever's watching. My name is David E. Garcia. I live currently in Illinois, northern northern Illinois, but I work in the state of Wisconsin. The, the state of Wisconsin is about five miles from where I live. So I live in a little town called Rockton, Illinois. It's a small town and I really love it here. Uh, a little bit about myself. I have not always been a native native teacher. What I mean by that is I, I've only been teaching for about five years. I come from the manufacturing and supervisory role that I have, that I had in factories. I used to supervise people. So I actually hold a degree in business and human resources, but I back in 2008, I when all the economic turmoil was going on, I decided to give teaching a shot because I've always wanted to be a teacher in my mind, in my career, so I'm, I, as far as I'm concerned, I'm kind of a newer teacher, but I, even though I'm a little older, but I've only been in education five years, so um, anyway, I would just like to say that I think whenever you have a conversation about education, I think that we have to, we have to sort of define what education and learning is, because there's so many people out there that claim to be educational experts. I, for one, am not an educational expert. Uh, I've been educated by life and some of the things that I've gone through in my life. So I think that we have to kind of, it's hard to define education and learning. So, you know, we have these mental models in our head about what learning is, about what education is. So we all have these models in our head of what we think learning is or education. Each of, each of us has a different view or perspective on what learning is. So for somebody, some, for somebody to say that somebody's an educational expert, I don't think anybody can know everything about education. So I just want to say that up front. Uh, so in terms of uh, Oleg was talking a little bit about, uh, and that leads me to talk about this in terms of learning can take on many forms. I don't think you can I don't think you can pinpoint exactly one way of, of learning. Uh, you know, we have the traditional approach in school where the teacher lectures and the students hear everything and they're just supposed to be like sponges and absorb all the information. Well, that, that to me is an approach that we're preparing students for, for, a, fu for a future that, that, you know, it no longer ex exists. Those type of jobs no longer exist where people were just, you know, working in factories or working roles. So, uh, so when we talk about online education, digital education, I think that's a tool that we can utilize for our advantage. I'm a firm believer that programs don't teach. Teachers do. So teachers must know how to use those instruments and those tools and have the flexibility and adapt and be adapt, um, adapt to what they can do with that technology. For me, I love even though I love technology, I don't think it's a cure-all and an end-all to everything. So we have to be very careful when 
when we use technology because in the end it's about the human interaction and how we use that technology not so much let just let the technology do the work right i just read an article uh, i think it was yesterday actually uh about this particular topic and the article said that from uh one of the university professors can't remember which university it was uh but you know when they see the word professor i'm immediately uh figuring it's worthwhile reading and so uh, the guy was saying that you know that you know he looked at many years of digital education and concluded that uh, essentially the same thing you're saying that the digital part itself cannot solve the education problem. And I think you know neither you nor that uh, person could be more right. I mean, they're nothing. The, the the whole digital thing is nothing but tools, and the whole technology thing. I mean, that's what I usually always tell my clients, you know, I'm in information technology, do consulting, do development, programming, things like that, and also do training as well. Uh, I always tell people that, that, you know, these are just tools. It's important to know what tools to use. It's important to know how to use them. And it's important to know, you know, last but not least, as I always say, is why you want to use them. So it's not just about using technology. No question in anybody's mind that technology is something that sig can significantly enhance just about any endeavor or task you uh, take on in both business and education. No question about that. There's many yes, things uh, that computers can do, and, and they can definitely enhance it. But they're nothing but tools. They're not solutions. If you need to go and, for example, uh, cut your uh, lawn, as an example, because the grass is too tall, then you cannot just say that I'm going to use technology to get a result. I don't have to do anything. With the technology of today, we don't have robots that go out and mow lawns just yet, which means you can get the most sophisticated, from technology standpoint, uh, lawnmower, and it'll help you cut faster and better and all that. You still need to actually move it around to get it done. So the, it's the same thing, I think, with education business is, yes, there's tremendous amount of tools, tremendous amount of technologies, but they're not replacements for human interaction <laughs> and for human, yeah. their enhancements to try to get that done in a more efficient, better way, but you still need that element to be there. And one other thing I was going to say, you got people like, like David, who is actually teaching. You cannot replace that. You can try to replace it, but then you're going to have to get all this information from him to be able to get the same. But it's we don't have the artificial intelligence at this point sophisticated enough to, to actually completely substitute the human being yet and you know i'm sure it's yes. coming but it's not here yet so we all agree that technology is definitely very important to use as a tool to enhance everything but not a replacement so and that's exactly why when i was you know getting putting together the elements for the hangout school.com that's exactly what i was thinking that you know we already have things like khan academy for example which does a wonderful job in terms of teaching all kinds of different things. Same thing with lynda.com, L-Y-N-D-A.com, who just bought out, that somebody just bought them out, a big company. And so that's, they have tons of videos and you know, a lot of online education, and that's all wonderful. But I still believe that, that having a ability to talk to a teacher and having the interactivity with the teacher is extremely important. So that's where the idea with Hangout School is you have Hangouts where you have teachers live in real time on one end of the screen and then you have of course students on the other end of the screen so with that being the case david i want to take it back to you so just before my question to you is specifically let's talk about kids getting their core uh subject education as so we're not talking about hypotheticals we're talking about core academic skills that kids need to that every child needs to go and get from school do you personally feel or I should just ask you, just how do you feel about getting that core education in a traditional way versus this hangoutschool.com type approach where you have a same life teacher, but it's on a screen and you have the child either at home or a student or whatever it's convenient for them. And, and you have small classes, you know, this would be like classes of eight to nine people max. Uh, what do you think about that? I think that um, there's a lot of different ways to think about this. For example, I always use the example of saying, for example, college isn't for everyone, right? I mean, we all know somebody that 
either dropped out of college. I'm not saying that you shouldn't. I'm not advocating for any of that. I'm just saying that sure. college isn't for everyone. So there might be people who dropped out and pursued other avenues, and they got they were very successful. We we talk about Bill Gates and Steve Jobs and those guys. They they didn't fit in in the tr traditional approach of college because it wasn't for them. Zuckerberg so. Yeah. Flip it, flip, flip that on the traditional model of education. That model isn't for everyone either. And maybe, you know, I hear a lot about these days. I hear a lot about personalized learning and blended learning, and all kinds of different things. And so my view on the, on there is a way. I mean, I when I was going to school, I had teachers that that were had high expectations of me had were pushing me to attain writing skills speaking skills presentation skills discussions critical thinking problem solving whatever it was so i'm just talking about from my perspective maybe some of the other students that were in with me maybe they didn't weren't perceptive to those things because of whatever issues were going on but in terms of online or our blended, flexible environments, I think that that can work also. But I think one of the most important things that I always advocate as a teacher is that you have to have high quality instruction and high quality teachers. And to me, that's where the core of everything that surrounds education should be at because a lot of people like to say, well, these kids can't learn because of that, or these kids can't learn because of this, and all these other, all kinds of other things going on. Well, right. I'm a perfect example that when you have teachers that are dedicated to you, no matter where you come from, no matter who you are, is you they're going to get you out of that, uh, whatever. Maybe if you were in poverty, maybe whatever, whatever's going on. But I think with online and digital education. I think you have to have teachers that are highly qualified as teachers to teach those subjects before they actually go into anything online or digital because sometimes I mean I'm not I'm not going to go out and accuse anybody of anything I'm just going to say that sometimes we get too savvy with our technology that we forget about our core instruction on how kids should be taught because for me before I'm a technology teacher I'm a literacy teacher I, I teach kids how to read write and discuss before even handling any type of technology, I need to make sure that my methods and my practices are strong because I could be the best technology teacher in the world, but if I don't know how to, to instruct and check for understanding or assess my students against a learning outcome or, a, or an expectation, it's gonna kind of it's gonna get no question to... about it. No question about it. And that's that's exactly why I wanted to set up the hangout school deal. To be in that way where basically the tools are used to enhance what teachers teach but not not in any way to replace it I mean, I want to make sure that everybody understands that point the school the, the technology end of it simply allows kids who may live in the boonies somewhere where they cannot get to decent school who may not have access to decent teachers things like that to be able to come to this school or similar school doesn't have to be you know hangoutschool.com similar school and basically be able to participate with of course it has to be qualified teachers that's true you know just about anything obviously if you don't have somebody doing a good job in in teaching you then you're not going to learn much and and the idea here what i put together on this deal and uh, is to have a rating system in other words instead of having uh, traditional school approach to trying to figure out how good the teachers are or kids are and they do all these kind of tests that to me are not that great actually the way it's set up to me it's pretty simple is you know teachers teaching in class and then students if it's young students then their parents as well rate at the end of the class they rate the teacher and at the same time of course two students get you know their uh, work and they have they have their homework and everything else just like in any school and then the teacher obviously gives them grades like they normally do. So you have a combined situation going on. We have students rating the teacher at the end of class. And then you have the teacher obviously doing the usual deal, uh, rating the students. And so over time, you have a really good picture. I mean, obviously, you're going to have some little anomalies here and there. But you will have really good picture that if a teacher is really a good teacher, 
and he's able to really influence the kids and teach them well and parents can see it and students can see it then the ratings will speak for themselves if you keep diligently doing the ratings and that's my plan to make sure that the teachers stay on the level like david you're talking about that if there is any teacher that comes in that's not on the level that teacher will not be teaching in this school and of course the yes. only way the only way sorry the only way you can tell that is like i said using these ratings again you're using technology as a tool to enhance the process not to replace it or anything like that so the teacher comes in with their own curriculum and nobody's going to interfere with them on that so they they have their own curriculum because they've first of all the teacher will come in only if they have credentials if they have experience and they have references of teaching uh positively positive references uh, to even participate in a hangout school.com then after the teacher start teaching then these ratings come in and then um we basically will take these ratings and then we determine whether the teacher continues to teach or whether it needs to it needs to be replaced with with another teacher and one thing i want to touch on about what you were saying about you know competency also and what to teach is the idea here is that this school will be um able to accommodate as many teachers and as many students as will come in there's really no limitations again due to inherent technology that we're using yes you only have small classes where you have like eight nine students at a time but at the same time there's really no limit how many of these classes and how many students how many teachers could potentially be part of the whole thing because of the way technology is structured so the technology will be used not necessarily to replace all the standard methods of you know we're not going to be reading any books we're not going to be doing any writing it's nothing like that it's just whatever you're teaching as a teacher you will be teaching using an online approach meaning like right now i'm looking at you you're looking at me and mm -hmm. you know you can hear me i can hear you it's exactly the same environment using exactly the same technology except right now we have only two people i mean three people i should say sorry i didn't count myself in here uh, we have three people in the hangout but this way it'll be up to potentially 10 people in a hangout but no more than that so that way the class size is kept to a, a fairly small and manageable amount for for the teacher and then the teacher is able to you know of course you can also use additional tools to show videos and present information in digital form but in addition to that mostly it's you looking at the teacher teacher is talking all this information is right there you know nice and big on your screen uh, unless you have a small iPad and then of course you uh, um, you take that uh, sorry I had to get that little jab in uh, and sorry. then you, you take this this uh, information you recorded on the video so it winds up being as a private video on YouTube so you can subsequently look at the class again and again if you need to something you can't do in traditional class uh, and then of course while you're in the hangout itself while you're in class you're able to ask the teacher questions in real time and they can answer them you can also interact with other students so there is a tremendous amount of capabilities to enhance the learning experience by utilizing some of these tools as enhancement tools nothing else and then the teacher does their deal you know yep. it takes a certain amount of time so can you let's talk about this thing now can you tell me about any negatives you see in this kind of, kind of environment uh, if you have a good teacher if you have this kind of situation well, going on. Yeah, I mean, we can talk about the real quick ones real quick. You know, access to technology. Maybe some kids or students might not have the technology or the, the devices. Right. So that could be a problem. Uh, the, the training to use the technology. But let, let's assume, let's assume, you know, in terms of training, I mean, uh, okay. kids today, I mean, I always okay. say to All right. people that uh, my son, who is only a little over 10, he can he knows a lot of, about this stuff much more than some of my clients so okay. kids for the most part are very techno okay. capable so if you if you take the prerequisites in place in other words the, okay. the people who participate do have the needed technology to participate and they know how to use it going to the okay. education part of it what would you say okay. about that that's negative if anything uh, I would say that one of the when I, I when I went to grad school I took a couple of online courses as a student and one of the things that I think students have to have is a lot of self-discipline to get things done digitally uh, because it, it requires you to be to stay on to stay on task constantly otherwise 
if you let something go, you're going to get really behind. So you have to have a lot of self-discipline when you when you participate in, in in any type of online environment because you have to be kind of driven to to engage this way and discuss this way or 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 write papers or whatever it is. But do you, th do you think it's more so than in traditional class? Um, no, I, you know, maybe not. I, I think I think my personal feeling is I think it's pretty much the same. I mean, you need to yeah, obviously that, if you true. don't want to learn, then you're not going to learn no matter what tools. No matter are, no matter what, you know, yeah, you're not going to learn. So you definitely need to have the right. It's, it's a different way. It's a different. It's a different way of learning. Right. So I'm trying to think. Of, I'm trying to think of negatives in this format. I I don't know. <laughs> No, it, like you said, I think the only thing, the only thing that you can construe as a little, even a little bit negative is the possibility of if somebody doesn't know how to do it right, I mean, how to use the technology itself, which, like I said, with most kids, it's definitely not a problem. They, they know how to use it better than adults. I think that's, I think that's more of a uh, resource problem, you know, resourceful. And then you have, of course, you need to have a computer, you need to have decent internet yeah. connection, cannot be... Like, yeah, I mean, that's, that's a basic, that's a basic thing, I guess, I don't know. Right. So outside of that, I personally could not find any faults to me. It's only the positives about yeah. because you do open up the possibilities of learning to a lot more kids. Uh, they can even go to their local library and take the, these lessons. That way they, they have access to computers, to, to internet connectivity with you know, headset and everything, and they don't pay a cent for it in terms of you know, the, having the technology, paying for technology itself. So I think it becomes, I mean, this online approach becomes a great equalizer because you're able to get to more uh, teachers because potentially you can have, my, my plan is to have as many teachers as I can possibly bring on board here uh, and have as many classes uh, and potentially have a educational Netflix, if you will, where the idea would be that you can pick literally every hour on the hour, you can start select from multiple math classes and so if you decide to have a math class at 10 a.m. on Tuesday, then that's when you're going to have it. If you want it to have it on 5 p.m. on Friday, you're going to have it then. So if we have enough teachers, and over time that's the plan, is to keep amassing more and more teachers uh, to be able to offer these classes to uh, as many people as possible and participation is there, then potentially there's no reason not to have a, uh, an, a situation where you have education on demand almost, where you can literally go to classes almost any time you wish, and uh, you sign up for them. The idea is to make it very uh, economical in terms of the cost. And that, of course, is handled by both if, because of the technology used and also because of the um, more participation of multiple students in the same yeah. class. And, and the teachers, the way I'm planning it, would be actually paid better in most cases than they get paid at school, regular school. Yeah. Plus, they can teach you for I them. just, I just, I just yeah. want to add this real quick. Oh, like, I think one of the, one of the, one of the lead, one of the th digital leaders that I that I follow on Google Plus is Eric Scheninger. I don't know if it, have you ever heard of him. I, I, no, it doesn't strike a bell. Eric, okay, Eric, okay, he's he's a uh, he he promotes a lot of digital learning, and one of the things that he says is that we can assess students by using different types of media with digital things. We okay, for example, if we have if we have a, a, a standard or, or a skill that we want our students to learn, we don't we don't have to use the worksheet anymore. We don't have to use the, the traditional methods that that we use in school. We can use any other type of artifact out there online. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like we can we can for example, if I if I have a standard of saying just a simple one, you know, students will students will write complete sentences. I'm just I'm just throwing right. it out there as a simple one. Right. You know, it doesn't have to be a worksheet. It could be it could be a video that they record themselves saying that. You know, like they write a sentence on a script and then they record themselves uh, saying a complete sentence. So Absolutely. that's a that's a different way of assessing that skill. So Eric always talks about you know we take a learning outcome, we take a standard, and we can assess students digitally and not the old traditional boring way of of how it's always done so i that's one of the reasons that i follow eric because he's always 
talking about yeah that. thinking a little bit out of the box and that's very important anywhere basically but but also i think it's definitely an excellent idea here doing an education because you can do there's you know like you said there's different kids that have different learning abilities and they have different ab learning preferences not even abilities but preferences some kids learn visually some kids learn by uh meaning by you know videos and pictures some kids learn by reading and and actually prefer it that way so you you know you can use a, this is it's a very media rich environment where you can do things like you just mentioned being able to uh record a video being able to watch a video uh be being able to you know basically join and hang out join other kids that happen to be talking to people from a space station i mean you could never mm -hmm. do anything like this in a traditional environment and at the same time you can bring the richness if you look at what google maps brings and and the google earth being able to look at practically any point in the world you can go diving uh, with uh, all kinds of animals in galapagos islands uh, right from your own screen at the same time you can travel to the dark side of the moon i mean it's amazing the capabilities we have especially the google tools and that's why we concentrate on google tools with hangoutschool.com is because there's such a plethora of capabilities for teachers you know the tool like google classroom is unbelievable jump forward it's actually a leap forward not just jump forward in terms of being able to to produce a very very cohesive environment for creating materials for learning at the same time getting um, information to students and getting their feedback back keeping track of classes of curriculum i mean it's a phenomenal tool for teachers in my view and all of this is available and uh, we're definitely going to be using all this before you wrap up here and i have to run to regular school to pick up my daughter because she's not signed into my school just yet uh, i want to get a few uh, take from ben uh, being uh, somebody who is uh, a student in school and actually just finished school and have him say a few words about his experience with you know doing some online learning versus traditional school learning and uh, ben just tell us what you think about this whole thing in my view online learning beats uh traditional school and i'm just doing this from my perspective as an example um one of the big buffs that um online school fixing is fixing is bullying you never have to worry about getting chase or stuffed in the locker because how can you do that from another state another thing is you do not have to smell the the you do not have to go through all the like bad experiences that regular school offers such as meatloaf um <clears throat> i also think it's much better because let's say you're uh like dad said in the boonies in some mexico you have a computer and there's not a any sort of school or any any good okay, care, school. careful with mexico we got david from mexico here so we don't want to offend anybody no, no i mean like that <laughs> like <laughs> desert my, my, far away far away yeah Some, somebody, somebody who lives in an area which doesn't have a lot of schools and maybe farmland things like that where you don't really have a big school you don't have a big population i mean I've driven through some towns that have, you know, 120 people population. You can't really build a big infrastructure there. But they do have satellite dishes and they do have internet access. They could easily participate. So go ahead, sorry. Yeah, basically. I mean, you could still get a proper education. No, but forgetting that, what I wanted to do is I want to get your take from your perspective, obviously. I'm not asking for anybody else's perspective. Your take about the concept of doing education since you took a class yourself online last year and you obviously are going to regular school what what's your feeling about the two would you recommend doing digital what do you like better what do you not like do you have any negatives you want to say about digital approach just one let's say you're in a class like art or gym in in regular school you can do art because you can just draw and just show it up and in gym the teacher can actually see you running but if you do an online approach, sure you could use an art app, but let's say you do something like um No, you're um, right, you're right, you're right, you're right. Man, marbling. Have ha, um have either of you ever heard of like marbling, like marbling paper? Yeah, yeah. In other words, some of the things that that's, require that's physical not a process you can properly do on a computer. Right. right. 
Right. And like on in gym, what are you gonna do? Like point the camera. You have to keep. No, you're right. You're right. Okay, okay. Going and you're running back and right. forth. We got it. Yeah. No, you're right. Yeah. You know, some of these things like this that have to the little physical, uh, something physical like this cannot be duplicated in an online environment. You're right. So some classes would not be doable. But if you look at core classes like you're taking, you're taking math, you're taking yeah, English, those you're in taking that, in that case, U.S. history, school, social studies. Online school dominates by far in those kind of classes. Is, is there anything else, if, if you could do, forgetting about the physical end of it, is there anything else negative that you think would be, that you can think of about, or your experience when you were taking classes last year that you didn't like or thought it would be better in regular school? No, besides that one little problem, there's nothing I think that online school cannot do um, at the same level or better than regular school. So if I, if I for example, said uh, as your parent that, you know, starting next year, uh, that we would switch to completely just having you do, you know, three, four hours a day in this kind of environment from home using a computer, would you be objecting to that or would you, um, would you be okay with that? I, I'd be completely fine with that because you can still like talk to your friends. You can still like I don't know get their phone numbers and they can come over to your house for some separate occasion if they just happen to live in the area. Yeah, um, yeah, and this is this is also an important part is the deal with socialization. I think a lot of kids go. To, I mean, a lot of people that I know do homeschooling, and you know we do some of that. But the problem with homeschooling, of course, you don't have interaction with other kids. If you just have a parent, well, you got several problems. Problem number one, uh, this from my perspective, is you're not a teacher. I can definitely teach classes on computers and programming, things like that. I cannot teach classes on uh, math or English. I'm just not an expert at that. And to me, I want my I just child. want to add something. Ola. Sure, sure, go ahead. I, I just want to add something to, to, to follow up what your point is. I think we have to be very careful also with, with technology. And we need that, like Ben was saying, that he needs his friends and they can come over. Uh, one of the one of the uh, things we have to be careful with technology, even not even as students, but as humans, is that technology can isolate ourselves a little too much sometimes because we're behind the device, you know. So it can make us not want to talk to each other uh, one on one sometimes. So we need a blended approach. The thing oh, that the train already and left. Yeah. We, we already have a bunch of people sitting looking at their phones all the time, so I think that train left. Yeah. But I understand what you're saying. What I was going to say was that, you know, one of the things that this particular kind of school, um, this approach, the online approach with hangoutschool.com, is we can definitely have the time before and after classes and separately from classes where kids just get together and do a hangout. I, I had the Ben kind of do a little endeavor last year called Kids Hang Out with Kids. And that's just specifically to get new friends, to talk about games, to talk about, you know, fun, to talk about something that would be uh, just kind of cool thing for them to interact on, just like in any other social environment. And so I think uh, I agree with the fact that it needs to be in place, but at the same time, I would say that you can, you can mimic. You're not replacing it exactly because there's no hugs and kisses, but you can certainly mimic a similar environment by just having kids participate in these hangouts outside of regular class time. And so you can actually make new friends that were part of your class, or, and you can subsequently communicate with them afterwards. I mean, that's the beauty of this kind of technology is you're able to do the social thing just like you normally do. Like I said, no hugging or kissing, but everything else you can do. I mean, here we're sitting, we're talking, oh, sure. we're socializing. Sure. So you're right. You need to be careful not to get into a deal where you just take a class and then you don't see anybody for two weeks. I mean, that's not a healthy thing for... for uh, we human beings are not built this way. We cannot live in an environment. I mean, this is how people used to, people used to torture people is by putting them in, in a cell by themselves and that alone would drive them crazy because we're not built to be like this. We need to interact with other people. We need to be able to um, uh, communicate with other people. We can't get anything done without having other people involved. I mean, we can only get a limited amount of things done. We certainly couldn't build everything that was built in the world by just having one person do it all. So that that's physically impossible. So the interaction part, the interactivity, and the communication and the socialization absolutely needs to be in place. And that's one of the main reasons why I wanted to make sure that the 
the school that I wanted to see happening is not based on videos where people simply talk to you one way and like Khan Academy does, for example. Not to say this is a horrible approach, but it completely kills the whole social element of it. And that's why I didn't want to sure. do anything like that. That's why I wanted to have the environment like we're do currently having right now, yeah. where we're yeah. interacting, we're talking to each other, we're bringing different possibilities, talking about things, you know, things. So in other words, keeping the social element as part of the mix for sure and yeah. interactivity. One, yeah, real quick, one idea, one idea that I've seen a lot of people do out here sometimes is that they'll have a what they call a book study. For example, they'll pick a book on any subject. You know, for, for teachers, they they pick a book for professional development, or for students, it could be a it could be a, a short story or something like that. And then say, okay, tomorrow we're gonna read read five pages, five to ten, and then we'll come back like this, and then we'll talk about it, right. and then we'll say, well, I thought this, that, I thought this and that. So that element is definitely there to to use this as a as a medium to question ourselves, to find answers, to pose questions, answers, ideas, and things like that. So I totally agree that this could work out like that. Excellent. Okay, now time is that we need to go run, uh, pick up my daughter. Again, limitations okay. of regular school. So David, thank you very, very much for being part of this today. I appreciate it. Well, thank uh, you, thank you. It was, it was an honor for you to invite me, so thank you very much. Bye, uh, Ben. Yeah. It was uh, an honor for me to have somebody with your background and uh, uh, being in the field and stuff, being able to participate. Definitely appreciate it very much. Um, we may do some other follow-up deals, and we'll definitely invite you if you decide to come, because uh, you know we can discuss this kind of stuff in, in about different parts of it. It's something that I think could could use more discussion. Oh, uh, sure. But un unfortunately, limitations of the real world, uh, you know, fall on us here, so we have oh, to do sure. it this way. So again, okay. thank you very much for coming, and thank um, you for having me. Thank you for having me. And Ben, thank you as well. And we'll talk again. Take care. All right. All right. Bye. 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 Bye.